Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to start the reading vlog for the second half of April. It's the magical readathon but also the start of Tom Topple today. I do have quite a list of books that I still want to read this month and today is actually a holiday here so I have technically four days of work now. Um, today, the weekend and then Monday is also a holiday. So uh, I hope that I will find time to relax and read. Uh, I still have a little bit of stuff to do for my PhD thesis. I want to finish it this month and I'm doing really good. I actually was very successful this week. So I'm trying to let myself rest a little bit more than I had anticipated, but I think I need it. Um, I'm, I'm struggling, guys. I'm struggling. So uh, I have three books here with me right now that I want to read <laughs> and I don't know what to do. So I have already finished two books for the Magical Readathon. I finished the Alchemy prompt and the Artificery prompt. And so what I still need to do is Inscription, Spells and Incantations, Art of Illusion, and I'm almost done with Conjur Conjuration, which is my audiobook. I think I'm about 70% into the audiobook, so I will definitely get this done. So there's three more prompts that I need to fulfill. I'm trying to become Archmage, so uh, that's, that's where the prompts come from. And so uh, for Inscription, which I think is the next one I want to do, is an intimidating read. And I have chosen this book that was quite intimidating to me when it was still in the wrapping. And that's also when I decided that I would use this for Tome Topple because it is 800 pages. But when I actually looked inside the book, I realized it has the biggest font of the planet. So I realized that it doesn't actually count for Tome Topple. I looked it up on Goodreads and the only other um, bigger book I found on there was 400 pages, so I don't know what's wrong with this edition, but I'm still gonna use it because it's the only bigger book apart from my audiobooks on my TBR right now. So I'm not really participating in Tome Topple, but I kind of pretend that I am, and you have to forgive me for that. So that is Inscription. And then for Art of Illusion, I have a Conjure Woman which I have started a while back. I'm 40 pages in and this is a book that I definitely have to read this month because it needs to go back to the library and I already had to return it once because I ran out of the times that I could uh, renew it. So very very high priority. I'm very excited about this book but for some reason it never fits into my reading plans so I need this. I need to read this. But then my mom sent me two books for Easter and one of them is calling my name in a way that I just can't resist and it is Heimat, a German family album and this one deals with the family history that a lot of German people have because actually our great parent, great parents? Grandparents? Grandparents! <laughs> Wow, that was a brain fart. You see that I'm struggling right now, okay? Um, but yeah, our, great, our grandparents or our great-grandparents were Nazis, probably. So um, this is a book that deals with that. And it's also a graphic memoir. So um, it has a lot of illustrations and it's just a very unique concept. And this draws me in so much. And this is a book I would actually read for the... A linguathon, which I also wanted to participate in, and I really need to start because I haven't yet. So, um, Heimat and also uh, the philosophy in the philosophy in the bedroom would both also count towards the linguathon. So yeah, what shall I do? Do I just start reading three books at once, or do I actually decide? So I think today I'm going to watch this German movie. It is based on the novel by one of my favorite German writers, Erich Kästner, who was a very fascinating person. He is the 
only writer who uh, watched the Nazis burn his books uh, and he did not leave Germany during the war but he decided to stay and to kind of wait it all out and yeah I think he's just very fascinating but he wrote mostly children's stories so I think this movie is based on his only adult novel so yeah I'm a bit intimidated because it's three hours but yeah, I definitely want to give it a go. So I'm now about 140 pages into The Philosophy of the Bedroom by Desaad. Um, this is quite an interesting book. It really has almost no intro. It gets right into the erotic scenes. Now, um, Desaad is basically a mixture of philosophy and erotica. So I wouldn't even call it smut. It's like straight up, no plot, just erotica. Um, and we have the basic setup here of a society of some people, a woman and two men, who decide to introduce a young girl into uh, their erotic exploits and their libertine lifestyles. And so that's what we see here. We basically follow the discussions that they have teaching this young girl. Mm, I must say that the philosophical aspects so far are not that great. <laughs> um, this is quite um, liberal when it comes to uh, sexual awakening and just, you know, having sexual encounters with people of the same sex or with multiple people and stuff like that. And it very much separates sex and love. Um, it does not talk about love at all so far. Um, but on the philosophical side, it's a little bit funny that I read this during Easter because, uh, yeah, this last part just ridiculed the whole Jesus story and, uh, yeah, really makes fun of that and, uh, yeah, uh, just portrays Jesus as some random uh, goon who just tried to get the most out of his situation. So that was quite weird. And it also is very... Uh, I don't know, uh, very elitist. So it right now it's hating against poor people. And so, yeah. Um, and also, like, the view on women is a bit odd because obviously these books were written, I think... I'm not quite sure. When, when did this come out? No, I don't think it says here. But I think it is written at the end of the... Uh, 18th century so um, <laughs> there's this like part where they talk about where life comes from and that basically science agrees that uh, life or like you know children come from only the uh, men so <laughs> the woman is basically the vessel and uh men pour life into women and then children are born but that children themselves have basically nothing to do with it which is ridiculous we know today that it does not work like that but yeah this whole idea of what a woman is builds on this and it also talks really badly about motherhood because when your mother is just a vessel and had basically nothing to do with your uh, yeah, with your life, then you don't have to respect her. And that's something that is 
quite prominently discussed here. So yeah, it's definitely a weird read. Um, but I do enjoy the more erotic content. So I hope we will switch away from the philosophy and get into more like, you know, smutty stuff. So I'm halfway through the philosophy in the bedroom now. Uh, this is an interesting book. It is basically written as a screenplay. So you have dialogue and you have some kind of like director things, you know, um, that describes what the people are doing in a very short form. I think I do enjoy the novel format of Justine and Juliette more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still interesting. Now, what this book really reminds me of is season three of Penny Dreadful, where we have uh, Dorian Gray together with, uh, what's her name? Frankenstein's creature, basically the female creature, uh, and they adopt a girl called Justine, but it's basically... Uh, Eugenia from this book um, and so th that's very much the vibe so you have these like very uh, very experienced libertines who are teaching this young girl how to enjoy all kinds of things in the bedroom and yeah so you have the kind of mixture between uh, the sex scenes and then the philosophical musings and I do think that the philosophical musings could be a little less. That's also something I felt with Juliet. Um, but uh, I also, I'm not sure if this is an abridged version because it reads like the sex scenes are abridged, but I'm not sure. But yeah, um, so far I think this is a solid three-star read. Uh, yeah, I, I think I would enjoy a novel more then I am enjoying this one. So this part of this book is a text that one of the characters is reading about philosophy and religion. And that is a quarter of the book. It's more than 200 pages in this edition. What is wrong with the author. <laughs> I don't care. I d this is what I've read so far of it. It's not even a dent. Oh my god. So today's the 19th of April and I have a very quick update. Last night or last afternoon, yesterday, I finished my audiobook Jade War, which I have read for the conjuration prompt of the magical readathon. So we have three subjects complete, which is halfway through the Archmage, which is really good. Um, I'm very positive that I can do it. So uh, Jade War was pretty, pretty good. Like the ending was so intense. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave the first book, Jade City, four stars, but I said that it was a weaker four stars. This one, I'm also giving four stars, but it's definitely a stronger four stars. So leaning towards a 4.5, but just not quite there for me. Um, there were just a couple of parts that still dragged for me or that were a little bit too overcomplicated for my taste. 
And yeah, but I really enjoyed the book. I would highly recommend it. As I said, very strong four stars. And then I'm also quite far into the philosophy of the bedroom. I think I have about 250 pages left. So I hope that I can maybe finish it tonight. Maybe tomorrow, we'll see. Um, yeah, today is the start of our semester. So today is the first lecture. I am quite nervous. I don't give the lecture. I just have to make sure that everything works. <laughs> but it's still a little bit terrifying. So yeah. So it is the 21st of April and last night I finished Philosophy in the Bedroom by Marquis de Sade. And with that I have finished the subject of inscription for the Magical Readathon. So four down, two more to go for the Archmage. I'm very excited. For this book I decided to give it three stars. I think it was entertaining and fine. Um, it's very readable for a classic, but it wasn't my favorite work of Dessart. I think if you ever want to try his writing, go with Justine. It's just so much better. The uh, special thing about this is that it is basically written as a play. So you have dialogue and you have some kind of like little uh, hints what the characters are doing and stuff like that, but it's not written as a novel. And I think I would have enjoyed it more as a novel because a lot of the descriptions were missing because of that. And basically what you have in this book is a mixture of orgies and philosophical musings, mainly of one of the characters. And uh, yeah, if you're into that kind of stuff, <laughs> I would recommend giving this art a try, but as I said, I found Justine just better because it had some plot. In this book, we are following, uh, yeah, the education of one girl. I already talked about it, I think. And it reminded me a lot of the third season of Penny Dreadful with Justine, Lily and Dorian Gray. It has a very similar dynamic. There's a bird. <laughs> Um, yeah, it has a very similar dynamic to that and uh, yeah, if, if you enjoyed that dynamic, that kind of like teaching a young girl about the dark sides of life but then maybe she starts to excel her teachers, that's kind of the dynamic in here. Um, you can definitely see that the whole Justine storyline in that show was heavily based on this book, so I found that to be very interesting. I think it's interesting as well that they still called her Justine because that's the most uh, well-known character of the Sad, even though uh, the character in this book is called uh, Eugenia. I don't know how you would say that in French, I'm sorry. But yeah, it was fun, it was fine. Um, a little bit too much on the philosophy. I already talked a little bit about the themes of uh, the philosophy in here, so very radical. It somehow reminded me a little bit of the Republicans in the US right now, <laughs> like a lot of ideas of like personal freedom over society, which, yeah, I guess in the 1790s was quite a radical thing. Right now I think it's just stupid, but <laughs> yeah, I don't really agree with the philosophy in here, but I think it's always interesting to challenge oneself with ideas and this works like not so a fine line between, uh, you know, the freedom to be yourself, express yourself, and then the freedom to hurt others. And I think that these are two things that should be separated, but are not in this book. So yeah, this is a uh, very sex positive, very um, open-minded to sexuality and gender identity, but uh, yeah, takes the liberal stance a bit too far proclaiming that there is basically uh, no crime and that it should be allowed to murder people and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that for this book. I will have to work now and hopefully not miss my bus and then we need to read two more books. Oh, so pretty. So 
today is the 29th of April. I haven't updated you in a very long time because reading is not going so smoothly. But I'm now more than halfway through Conjure Woman by Afia Atakora and I am really, really enjoying this book. Um, it is a bit more slow going than I anticipated just because there's a lot of text on a page. So uh, yeah, I'm not reading as fast as I thought I would and this will probably be the last full length book that I can read for the Magical Readathon. Um, if I read 70 pages today and 70 pages uh, tomorrow, I will be able to finish this in time and uh, I will talk more about that when we get there. But this book is so good. Um, it basically follows a community of uh, black people before and after slavery was abolished. So we have multiple timelines and we're switching back and forth a little bit. But the main focus is right after the war when slavery was abolished, but these black folks basically had nothing. And we have this little community. They still basically live on the plantation and uh, yeah, just try to get by. They don't really understand what uh, this freedom thing means for them. And um, they are just very secluded and as I said, just try to live their lives now um, with a premise they didn't even expect would ever be a possibility. And though what's interesting is that we follow the main character of Rue and she is the healing woman of the town and her mother was before her. So we get a lot of insights into her mother as well and we focus a lot on the mother-daughter relationship during slavery time, which was a very privileged position in a way because uh, the healing women weren't uh, put to work in the same way the other slaves were. Um, but obviously, uh, yeah, it was just an important thing for the uh, for the slave owners because they made sure that people survived illnesses, uh, gave a birth to healthy children and stuff like that. So uh, it's a very, very interesting perspective, something I love to read about. And Rue's mother was also into, uh, uh, is it voodoo or hoodoo? Uh, I never know. I think it's voodoo. Um, and it focuses a little bit on that as well. We see a couple of the trinkets and stuff that she uses. And Rue, we are not quite sure how much she followed in that footstep, but she is the healing woman now. And when there is a child born that has black eyes, very light skin and a very disturbing cry, everything thinks that Rue is uh, working with the devil and that this child is a bad omen. And we also get a kind of traveling uh, preacher man who comes to the town. And uh, in the first half, we have a bit of a rivalry between him and Rue for the uh, kind of uh, people of the town. And these are all themes that I absolutely love reading about. In that way, it reminded me a little bit of the Winter Night trilogy of Catherine Arden, because we also have that kind of um, rivalry between the more nature-based uh, mythology of the people and then Christianity. Uh, so it had some similar dynamics, but it goes into a different direction. Um, and yeah, I just really, really love the themes. I think Rue is such an interesting main character and I just really enjoy reading this book. So I hope, as I said, I will finish it uh, in the next two days so I can count it for the Magic Readathon and I will let you, more, let you know more when I finished it. So today's the last day of April and the last day of the Magical Readathon and I still need to finish two prompts. So in this book I have 100 pages left now, um, so we need to get this done. And then I still need to do the short story prompt and for that I have this little collection with four short stories by Suzanne Hill, which is 70 pages. Now, reading 170 pages is a lot for me on any day, but I also have to work a lot today, so this will be interesting. But I got my breakfast here and everything, so uh, I'm joining some reading sprints now and hopefully read about 50 pages of that before I really start my day. I got up early and stuff, so yeah, let's do this.
So it's a couple of hours later now and I have finished Conjure Woman. I really couldn't put it down. The last 100 pages were so crazy. So much happened. So many like secrets were revealed. So many puzzle pieces suddenly fit together. And yeah, this book is a lot. It's just a lot. It really like the content warning list for this book would be long. Um, obviously, it deals with slavery, it deals with the aftermath, but it also deals with um, the fact that men have a lot of power over women and just like the way the world worked back then. And it's really horrifying. Um, but I think the way the plot was done was excellent. I'm going to give it five stars. Um, I really didn't see it coming, like how the pieces fit together in the end. And it just ticked so many of my boxes. Like it has really intriguing relationships, an amazing main character, really harrowing things that actually happened in the world and that will show you how horrible people are. And yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Um, such a good book. Uh, I'm so sad that people don't talk about this more. I've seen it on two channels, um, I think. But uh, yeah, this definitely needs to be higher up on people's lists, especially if you like historical fiction. And I know that this is classified as magical realism, but the magic is like very, a very, very tiny bit of the story. So uh, don't expect it to be like a huge part. It's more that with a lot of the things that are happening, it's not quite sure whether... Um, they really are happening or whether it's just the way that people tell the story just the way the whole hoodoo was incorporated in the story as well um you have that kind of like magical touch but uh you're never really sure whether there's actually some magic happening and all the horrible things that happen are definitely things that humans are doing that yeah that are just factual and things that had that have happened um, during that time and some things that are still happening today. Uh, so yeah, I loved it. And I'm very glad I finally read this book because uh, I had did checked out from the library for so long and I knew it would be a book that I love. Um, but you know, sometimes those are the ones we try to save up for a time when we need a good book. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I finally read it. So this means I have Art of Illusion checked off as a subject and now the only ones left is uh, Spells and Incantations. So I will do that later tonight and then I have finished all the prompts for the Archmage. It is 7 now and I have edited 100 pages of my PhD thesis today. I have about 70 left for tomorrow. So my brain is fried, <laughs> but I still must read this book um, for the Magical Readathon. So I'm going to stop working now. I'm going to have some store-bought samosas and some kombucha and I will read this. Okay, so I finished my last book. I read this for Spells and Incantations, so I've now finished all of the prompts for Archmage, which makes me very happy. Unfortunately, I really failed the Linguathon, but, you know, it just happens sometimes, and I'm still really, really proud of what I achieved this month. Um, this collection is really interesting. Overall, I gave it four stars. It has four stories in it. The first story, listening to the orchestra, I didn't really get. Um, it's about a woman in a seaside town working in a hotel. It was just confusing. Um, maybe that was also because I was still in a bit of a haze from working all day, but I didn't get it. Then we have the second story, which follows a, a girl who has a blind uncle 
And it kind of reflects the idea that when we're children, we kind of believe things adults tell us, but there's this one point of growing up when we realize that maybe not all of it is true. Mm, and it had a great atmosphere. I really enjoyed that story. It was very interesting. Then the third story was actually my favorite, which follows um, two siblings. And that's told mainly from the girl's point of view. And we learned that her family is quite poor. And at the beginning of the story, she's told that her parents went to see the doctor, which is very concerning because they don't have a lot of money and they don't usually go to the doctor except for when it's really bad. And then when she gets home with her brother, the father suddenly mm, says they're going to go on a vacation. That story was really quite heartbreaking and especially after finishing Contra Woman today. Um, yeah, it just it just pulled all my strings and um, that story I gave five stars. It's fantastic. And then in the last story you follow a man who goes to a Eastern European city to work there and um, he has like trouble fitting in. But then he finds this really nice cafe with really good food where he feels um, at home until a weird woman shows up and she starts following him. And yeah, that one had great atmosphere as well. And I think it would be a, re a really interesting story to analyze in a class context. So yeah, this was really good. Susan Hill is a great writer and I would highly recommend her work. So it's Sunday, I'm in my cozy wear, but I thought we'd quickly finish off this vlog. So last night you saw me finish these two books, Contra Woman, which was 5 out of 5 stars, and uh, Listening to the Orchestra, which was 4 out of 5 stars for me. And with that, I finished all of my plans for the magical readathon. And I'm very, very happy about that, because that was my main goal for the month. Now for the books I did not finish, I'm about 60% into my audiobook Jade, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. So I will finish that in May, but I'm absolutely loving it so far. It's the last book in the bone in the Green Bone saga, and it's amazing. Then I had also started reading Heimat by Nora Krug. Um, this one I only got about two chapters into it. It's a kind of graphic memoir about her a German family and her, the family history, basically. I don't even know whether I talked about this. <laughs> um, I got this for Easter from my mom and I wanted to read this for a linguathon, but I just didn't have any time. So I will probably put this on hold for now because it doesn't really fit into my reading plans for May. I could fit it in but then I would have to throw other books out and I'm not quite sure about that yet. But yeah, uh, two chapters, really intriguing so far. I'm very, very excited for this book, um, but unfortunately could not finish it yesterday. And then the other book I wanted to read for Linguathon was Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. And this one, unfortunately, I did not get to. Um, I won this in a giveaway because uh, one of the channels I really like watching by Yulin, which I will link down below, she reached, I think, 1k subscribers, maybe more. I don't quite remember, but uh, one of her booktube friends was uh, doing a giveaway for that, um, Stacy. So I won this from Stacy. I will also link her channel down below. She usually does like live reading sprints and live discussions. So if you're into these kind of content stuff things, then uh, yeah, check her out. But I won this book. It was really exciting. But unfortunately, again, um, yeah, it was just a bit too chunky to finish it in one day yesterday. So uh, maybe I will be able to read this in May for the Asian readathon, which would be pretty cool. But I do have a long list of books I want to read, so I'm not quite sure. Um, but it is a book I'm very interested in. I think it's like disturbing short stories and I, I love the cover. It's so pretty. So I did do Magical Readathon. I failed Linguathon, only read one book for that. But still a good reading month so far. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, leave a like or a nice comment. I always appreciate those. And if you subscribe, I will talk to you soon. Bye.